sure. Um, and with that understanding, can you bring it home for somebody who's watching um, the podcast tonight and wondering what is a mortgage bond and how does it work? Sure. Um, a mortgage bond is really a, a loan that is secured against the, the, the property. Welcome to the Private Property Podcast. My name is Tumi WMJ. And as usual, we are bringing you on the pulse information in the property industry. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And it is a pleasure. If you are seeing my face for the first time, don't worry, don't worry. You are at the right place. It is the podcast here where we are bringing you information that is going to help you make the right decisions in your property portfolio. Today, we're going to be talking about mortgage bonds and how to save money. I'm sure the moment you heard how to save money, you were like, yes, I'm going to listen because that is what we want to help you to do. We want you to we want to help you to buy, sell, invest and just manage your 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 portfolio overall and make sure that we are doing the right thing at the right time. So today I've got the co-founder and chief executive of SA Home Loans, Mr. Simon Stockley to talk to us about mortgage bonds and of course how to save money. Good evening and how are you, Simon? Good evening, I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me on your show. Thank you so much for, for taking our time to talk to us. I'm sure a lot of our viewers want to know how to save money in these tough economic times. Everybody wants to know how to save money. <laughs> so um, before we kick off um, our discussion tonight, just tell us about um, your, a little bit about yourself and why you are passionate about property. Well, I'm, 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 a, I'm a lawyer by profession, a property lawyer by profession, but um, I haven't practiced law for all 30 30 or 40 years. I was involved in property, first of all, as a developer. So I, I was involved in borrowing property and fairly large sums of money. Uh, and I was um, subject to mortgage bonds from a borrower's perspective. And I, I, I encountered many pitfalls. Um, then in the mid-90s, uh, when interest rates um, kind of peaked to 28%, I came to the startling realization that it wasn't a particularly good time to be borrowing money. You should actually be lending money. Um, mm. So with a couple of um, fellow investors, um, we founded SA Home Loans, which was the first non-bank lender. And we pioneered the, um, the aspect of switching and um, trying to offer consumers a competitive um, mortgage uh, bond as opposed mm. to just simply accepting uh, the first price that was quoted. Um, I subsequently sold my, my stake in SA Home Loans. I um, am, the, in fact, the former chief executive of SA Home Loans in about 2005. And I consulted to kind of banks um, and, um, and, and, and non-bank well, non, non -bank lenders in the mortgage space um, for the last 15 years. Uh, in far places as, as far afield as um, Saudi Arabia, Ghana, Nigeria. So I have a, mm. a fairly um, deep and, and, and broad understanding of the market. Sure. Um, and with that understanding, can you bring it home for somebody who's watching um, the podcast tonight and wondering what is a mortgage bond and how does it work? Sure. Um, a mortgage bond is really a a loan that is secured against the the, the property. Um, and it is the method used by the vast majority of people to, to acquire property. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I guess the, 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 the trick or the secret is um, in approaching lenders or prospective lenders, the, the overriding um, consideration is never to take the first offer that you should you, you receive. Um, you should always shop around. You should always um, compare prices um, because a small difference in interest rates on the, on, 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 on the price quoted can amount to a large sum of money over the period of the loan. So it's 
absolutely vital and absolutely important in acquiring a mortgage to shop around. Sure. Let's talk about um, um, when, when one is shopping around. Who am I looking for? Um, who can register a bond? Who can help me and assist? Um, I, I heard you talk about banks and, um, and, and SA Home Loans, which is not really a bank. So how do, how do I go yeah. about it? Who am I looking for? Well, there, 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 are, two, there are two methods of, of essentially acquiring a loan. You can either go directly to your bank or a non-bank lender. You don't necessarily have to go to a bank. Um, the only non-bank lender operating at scale in the in the market at the moment is SA Home Loans. Um, otherwise, the, the the four major commercial banks, and you can approach them directly. Um, you should never just approach the one. You should always um, shop around and um, you know submit your bond application to to multiple lenders uh, in the hope of um, levering off competitive rates. Um, Obtained from those those lenders, uh, so that's the 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 the, 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 the you know the, the the primary place to go is just to simply go on the web or, or, or walk into a branch and and you know give them all the personal details that is required. Now, obviously, for a first time buyer, um, that process can be somewhat daunting because the mm. um, the, the, the the loan agreements are fairly complicated. Um, there's a lot of supporting documentation that, that, that the bank will require. Sure. So a number of people tend to use um, mortgage originators. Now, uh, an originator will not um, cost you any more money. Uh, in, in fact, they can save you money because they are well-versed in, in, in mortgage practices, and they will tailor-make or, or only submit your application to those institutions um, that uh, you know are, are, are best suited to, the, to, to, to the, your, your particular circumstances. Mm. Um, so I would encourage um, first-time homeowners to, to avail themselves of, 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 of the use of a mortgage broker. Um, they just make sure that the mortgage broker doesn't charge you a fee. His fee should be paid um, by the bank. Who ultimately grants the loan? So don't don't commit um, to any um, financial implications up front. Ensure that the the fee comes out or case is paid from the, the institution granting the loan. Um, but uh, you know, mortgage brokers can um, greatly facilitate and 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 hold your hand as a first time buyer. No, I, I really hear that. And there are so many myths because this is a daunting task and it's, it's, a, it's almost a lifetime commitment. I'm, I'm, we're talking 20, 30 years uh, max uh, from, from what we hear. Yeah. So I really would like to know what are the advantages and the disadvantages of choosing to have a mortgage bond? Because then you hear all of these other alternatives that people put on the table, myths that come with having a mortgage bond. So from, from what I would call an expert, what would you say um, advantages and disadvantages are? Well, I, you know, as I say, the, the, the primary advantage is um, that a mortgage broker specialises in mortgage bonds and is, is, a, is, is, is aware of what's happening in the market, um, is aware what type uh, types of um, applications are being considered favourably by, by institutions. Um, so it is his or her deep knowledge and understanding of the market. As I say, there are some charlatans operating in the industry who, who attempt to charge a, a, a raising fee um, or a, an application fee uh, to you as a customer. Avoid those um, people at all costs. There, there should be no charge from a, from a mortgage originator um, from, a, from a customer perspective. Um, but uh, approach one of the... Um, the reputable um, brokers or originators, uh, and let them assist you in, 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 in the mortgage process. Um, the only time I would recommend not going through a, a, a bond originator is in, if you are privately banked. So if you have a bank manager, um, you are in the fortunate position of not having to deal with a, um, a bank or a non-financial institution's call center, if you have the name of a bank manager, then, 
then certainly go directly to them and let them handle the, the application. But in all circumstances, you should always obtain a second quote or even a third quote um, for comparative um, purposes. And when we talk disadvantages, um, would you say there is a disadvantage in having a mortgage bond? No, uh, of, of having a mortgage bond or using an originator? No, having the actual bond. Oh, well, I mean, so the important thing to, to, to realize is that you're going to pay interest on the loan. I mean, and that interest is going to be calculated over 20 years. Um, so, you know, when you get when the loan is granted, you'll get a breakdown and you'll see how much interest is, is, is charged on the loan. Um, so it is absolutely vital that any excess cash that you have, um, you pay over and above. Um, the instalment uh, that is quoted in, in, in the mortgage, because paying down your mortgage is the most efficient and effective way of, 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 of saving money. Mm. So if you get a, an annual bonus, for example, and you, you know, put some, some of that money aside into your, 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 your home loan and you, 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 you pay down the loan quicker than the, um, than the, 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 the scheduled uh, repayment, that can save you an enormous amount of money over the life of the loan. So the 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 um, the disadvantage of having a mortgage loan is simply the interest that is going to uh, that you're going to pay over the life of the loan. But it's an mm. it, you know it's it's a it's an it's an ins, it, you, it, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, if you can't afford to pay cash for the property, well then you'll have to take a loan. Um, and that's just, you know, one of the facts of life. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. just the, the, the hardship of life. I mean, <laughs> but... Sure. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, I'll just... Bef I'll, I'll come back to the questions. I just want to um, look at the... Sure the social media interaction that we'll be having. Thank you so much to everyone who continuously engages with us. We really, really appreciate it. Drop those green hearts and make sure that we know that you are here. Um, we asked a question um, where people were, where we, where we asked a poll rather, where we asked people, would you rather buy a house cash or take out a mortgage? And we got an astonishing 400 comments. I was really, really impressed to see the kind of en engagement that we had, you know. Um, Lukman Mokwa says, there is a down part to paying a house cash. You might overpay the house, whereas a bond, with a bond, you will get a proper evaluation and um, you will not have to overpay. Um, do you want to chip in here, uh, Simon? Uh, there's, 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 certainly, there's certainly some merit in, 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 in that observation. Um, you know, part of the process of granting a mortgage bond is that the banks will send out their, um, their valuation department um, who will uh, submit a, a, a valuation. They won't always disclose that valuation to you, but um, if they decline the loan, um, they may indicate that it is because they do not see value in, in, in the property. Um, so yes, that, that is, um, it, it is a very valid comment. Um, what of course you can do um, if you are paying cash is you can pay for a valuation or a professional valuer yourself um, to come in and give you a, a third-party appraisal. So, um, yes, that happens automatically when taking a mortgage loan, but um, it's not. It, it is nothing that preclude, precludes you as a, an individual purchaser um, from um, acquiring a, a, a third-party valuation. On the topic of saving money, I think Winston is coming with something really, really interesting because he says uh, one can take out a mortgage, then leverage the same mortgage to buy a second property and just keep repeating the process. Uh, you know, is, yes. this, this, is this a smart way you would say or you believe to start a property portfolio? Well, uh, yes. I mean, the, the advice that I would give is always pay down your primary residence in the first instance. Mm. So, I mean, I think before investing in, 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 in stocks and shares, um, I think there's something um, deeply uh, entrenched in the, in, the South, in the South African psyche of, of, of owning a home. And I would encourage everybody to pay down their, 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 their loan and, and strive to be bond free. But once you, you, you're in a position uh, to uh, pay down your loan, then you can take out further mortgages on investment properties 
and gear up against them. Or you can simply, when once you pay down the loan, take out a portion of the loan, so re refinance a portion of the loan to use that as a deposit for a second or a third investment property. But in every instance, I would always encourage people to pay down their loan as their primary residence. Thank you so much for that, Simon. Thank you. And if you just joined us, we are talking mortgage bonds and how to save money. Thank you so much for, for engaging with us and sending us your questions. So let's get to the saving money part. You know, what are the key things you would say um, that if I, am, I have a mortgage bond, this is the way I'm going to save money? Or these are maybe the two or three ways that I could save money. Um, is it... Um, buying new developments because people say without developments you don't have transfer costs and there are all of these conversations that happen offline so just uh, crystallize it for us to say how can i save money when i'm when i'm well, entering into i mean the, 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 the first instance is, is is meet your monthly installments i mean if you go into arrears you're going to get charged penalty interest um and eventually you, you run the risk of losing your home so you must maintain your um your your schedule in, in installment at the very very minimum as I said earlier on, I would encourage people to pay any excess cash that they have into their bonds. So to try and reduce the amount of, of, of their bond as quickly as possible, because an extra 100 rand a month uh, over and above your, your scheduled installment can save you um, masses of money over the, over the life of the loan. Um, so that, that's the second thing. The third um, area in which um, I would uh, encourage savings is, 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 as I said, shop around. I do not accept mm. the first um, quote that you get. Get competitive quotes, compare those pro quotes, go back to um, your preferred financial institution, um, disclose to them what other quotes you've got, and, 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 and negotiate. Um, you know, uh, banks and, 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 and non-bank lenders like loans, like mortgage loans, because it's a very sticky relationship. It, it, you know, you, you, it's an investment for 20 years. Um, they like lending um, on property. And they will do everything in their power to facilitate a transaction. But the important thing from a consumer perspective is to shop around and read the small print. And what, what am I looking for in the small print? What am I looking for? What are those things that um, you would advise a first-time um, mortgage um, buyer or someone who's going into a mortgage agreement for the first time to look out for? What is in the small print that I'm, uh, that I'm looking out for? With, with, the, with the major financial institutions, um, it's, it's, it's fairly standard documentation. So, mm. um, you know, you are protected um, in, in terms of the Consumer Protection Act. Um, you don't have to um, be concerned unduly um, with, 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 with being ripped off. But where you, 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 you do need to apply your mind is the instalment. Um, the, so that, that, that's the rate of interest that they're charging on the loan. The duration of the loan, is it over 20 years, 25 years, or 30 years? And the size of the deposit that you're, you're required to put down. Um, and whatever costs are associated with the loan. So those are the areas where um, one must apply one's mind. As I say, if you are venturing outside of the, the major financial institutions and you are perhaps taking a loan or a mortgage loan from a private ind individual or um, one of the less well-known um, providers of, of, of finance, then check the documentation uh, extremely carefully um, uh, because there is, um, you know, some funnies that can, can, can creep in. Um, but it, with the major financial institutions, if you, you know, check the rate of interest you're being charged, the duration of the loan, whatever costs are associated, you're fairly well protected. 
No, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Simon. Um, we're really gaining so much um, insight on this. And my, my next question is something you said. Um, you mentioned this earlier as well, and we're speaking, how does one look out for scams? Because, you know, in such um, a very volatile environment and, and, and your mistakes are costly and they could cost your, you your home, like you said. So, and the scams are, are increasing by the day, you know. So how does one protect themselves from, from potential scammers? The, the the potential scammers are really operate in the origination space, so where people are offering to act as an originator and are undertaking to arrange a loan. So when you um, hear about arranging fees or or, or origination fees, um, that's when sort of alarm bells should start ringing. You should not mm. ever pay an originator um, yourself um, for arranging a loan. The originators should get paid from the institution granting the, um, the, 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 the loan, and it should not affect you as a customer. So if somebody is, 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 is wanting to charge a fee, um, just walk away. You know, you don't <laughs> need, um, you don't need uh, those kind of um, operators um, assisting you in, in acquiring mortgage finance. Sure. Thank you so much. I'm a first time buyer, for example, and I'm going into the market. Um, I've got my paperwork set. How long are we talking? Let's talk uh, turnaround times. Let's talk how um, the, the needs, my needs analysis, are they going to ask me for, for my parents' ID books? What are they going to ask for? And no, what is, I mean, what the, is the, the, the documentation is relatively simple. I mean, um, they require proof of income. So you have to have um, you know, in, in much the same way um, that you open an account, um, a proof of address um, and, um, you know, three, three months, not, not, not older than three months, you require an ID document. Um, and then details of the property that you are acquiring. So um, the lending process is divided into two component parts. The one component part relates to affordability. Um, so that is uh, related to your ability to repay the loan. So you will have to provide um, some um, form of substantiating your income. So pay slip, uh, tax return. Um, if, in, if you're self-employed, then you might require financial um, statements or, or, or the like. So you should you should have these 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 documents ready at, when you when you approach the the financial institutions. Your ID documents so that they can you know establish who you are. Who you are. Mm -hmm. And then details of the property, where the property is, um, and um, access to the property. Uh, so if you if you bought through an estate agent, I mean they they will uh, arrange access. Um, the process is relatively simple. Um, you know, if you if if all of your documentation is in order, um, you should get an approval in principle within a period of seventy two hours um, from the from the from the time of submitting, um, and then a final approval um, probably within another seventy two hours. So you know, literally within a week, um, provided all all documentation is in order um, within a week. You know, sometimes when it, it always seems like a very daunting process, and this is why some people are just like, I'd rather not do this right now. So what are your last words when we're talking to somebody um, talk, or, or talking to even some uh, people who want to um, expand their their property portfolio, you know, want to grow it and want to ensure that they, they, they acquire more properties. Um, what, what would your advice be to those, to such people? I really believe, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but I, I do believe in shopping around, you know, mm. recognize that it's a competitive landscape, that banks are actually actively competing um, to lend you money. Um, and, 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 and leave off that fact. I mean, the power rests with you as a consumer. And if you choose not to exercise that power and accept the first quote that you, 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 you get, then you, you run the risk of, of, of paying more than you should. So my mm. overriding advice is shop around, shop around. 
Sure. Before I let you go, I would want to ask you one question. So what would you do? Would you, would you buy it cash or take a mortgage? Or is that a trick question? Uh, no, I, I mean, as I say, uh, I, I mean, for the vast majority of, of, of South Africans, I mean, paying cash for a property is simply not an option. Mm, sure. Um, but I would always take a mortgage and try to pay it down as quickly as possible Sure. in terms of my primary residence. I would then use a mortgage to lever off um, and 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 and, and uh, exploit the, the benefits of gearing in respect of secondary and and, and uh, secondary investments. So, um, but you know, for 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 the vast majority of South Africans, taking out um, a mortgage is just a fact of life. It's um, you know like tax and and, and, and <laughs> death. A mortgage is an, an inevitability. I mean, most of us you know, are not going to get an opportunity when starting out on the property ladder to, to acquire a property for cash. Cool. Thank you so, so much. Um, so much love from the Private Property Podcast family coming through. They're saying absolutely great insights and they are benefiting so much from the conversation that we are having tonight. So thank you so much. Um, I, would, I would ask us uh, um, a couple of questions, but we would stay here all night. So thank you so much, uh, Simon, for staying with us tonight and really giving us this valuable information. We really do appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of today's episode. So, so, so much information to take in, such valuable information. Please do ensure that as we are giving you this information, you, it's something that you practice in your life because that is the whole reason why we do this. You know, do ensure that you keep the comments coming in, you share it with people who you, need, who you think will need this information. Um, so until the next time we see you, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good one.